mountain in the midst of your people. Be exalted in your holy sanctuary. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you, our Jesus. We exalt your name. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We thank you. You know, we have received help tonight. We have received help tonight. Help has found us. Thank you, Jesus. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty and dead, but I'm alive in your hand. I say, Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty and dead, but alive in your hand. Your grace has found me. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty and there, empty and there, but alive in you. Can you scream it like you mean it? Your grace has found me. Your grace has found me just as I am. Oh, empty and there, empty and there, but alive in you. One more time, say it like you mean it. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty and there, empty and there, but alive in your end. Oh, singing majesty, majesty. Oh, oh we're singing majesty, majesty. Forever. Changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. Oh, we sing in majesty. Oh, church, lift your voice and say, Majesty, Majesty, Majesty. Oh, your grace, your grace has found me. Grace has found me just as I. Oh, empty and dead I came. Empty and dead, but alive in your hands. Oh, singing majesty, majesty. Oh, we're singing majesty. Ma, hey, Jesse, forever, 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 I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty, in the presence. Lord, you have praise in this house. You have praise amongst your people. This is the house of your praise. Forever will sing your praise. Forever will leave your praise. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. The Lord is worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all our adoration. Is worthy to receive all glory. He is a good God, a good Father. He's gracious, he's mighty, he's awesome, and he's holy. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Once again, welcome to Bible study. And 
We thank God for the privilege to, <coughs> to be in His presence again this evening. And we are sure that He's going to bless us so mightily tonight in Jesus' name. Don't worry, you're welcome. I called Kennedy some minutes ago when I was in that room. I tried to call you through last week. Switched up. What happened? You've not repaired your phone. Okay, you've not repaired your but you have another number. You have to give us that number today. I was asking, I hope you are fine. I went like you did see you there. Are you fine? He said he saw you today. I was like, I didn't see you. Well, it's, on, it's on your year of you. Well, I didn't tell you you're going to travel. So I knew you didn't travel. Or maybe you travel later. You travel in the spirit. But we missed you. So we, I'm my wife, I've been bothered. I, I'm a good to know what's happening. Try your number, switch up. So you give us that number today. All these people, they are bad people. All these Ezekiel, they, they are not bothered about you. <laughs> it's only my mother that are that bothered about you. <laughs> so you give me that number today. We, should, we, we don't know where this is. We are, waiting, we are visiting him this week. Me, Ezekiel, and Ewa. I don't know where this week. Yeah. You are hosting us this week. Why are you laughing? Yeah. You know what will come to you us, we are coming. Either you invite us or not, we have invited ourselves. It's an only invitation. We have invited ourselves to your house. We are visiting, we are visiting you this week. It's good to have you around. God bless you. You'll tell me what happened later. Don't let them know. Glory to Jesus. All right, church. It's always good to be in church. I know you will enjoy morning service because we close very early. How many of you want, want it to always be like that? How many, of, how many of you want it to always be like that? Be sincere. Raise your hand. Raise your If you don't raise your hand, it's only, only people who raise their hand will be closing early. The remaining, <laughs> the remaining people will stay together. If, if you want it to be like that, continually raise your hand. Ah, Mubarak, you don't want it to be like that. You want to, for the last time, for the last time, for the last time, you want it to be like that, continually raise your hand. See them. Yeah, you're not, you're, 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 you want to sit down? Sit down. You're, you're not ashamed of yourself. And you're saying you want to grow spiritually. You say, and you're saying, you're, you're pointing at my wife. And you're saying you want to grow, you want to grow spiritually. I you want to be going to many. I you want to grow. That's how you grow. Now. Me, I wish I would do my best. I, God sees my heart. I will do my best. People say you want to be closing early. I will follow you. I will follow I'll follow your instruction. <laughs> but I really enjoyed morning service. It was so beautiful and awesome. Don't worry, we'll be closing that early now. God, God has touched my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> Can you see how God, how God is to expose the secret of men's heart? See how, <laughs> see, how, see, how, see how, See how God is to expose the secret of men's heart. See how she tell glory. He has been praying. He has been praying that God touch pastor's heart. This, this pastor is a bad man. Touch his heart for us. <laughs> <laughs> glory to Jesus. Don't worry. We'll be closing early now. That's early. Amen. And even our weekly services too. As in our midweek and Sunday evening too. Today now, maximum. 7.45. I'm done. Maximum. We'll share the grace in five minutes. So before it to clock, we are out of here. Praise Jesus for now. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Okay, so the local assembly, the spirit of local assembly, pre salvation. We said some good things about this. We've had some wonderful conversations. Praise Jesus for now. Shout hallelujah. It was just beautiful in the morning. So we saw how Satan could destroy a community, a people, a nation because of sin. That sin is a legal ground for Satan to destroy a community. Shout hallelujah. Every day I'm getting un- uncomfortable with this mic. There's a, there's a way my spirit is wants to be talking now quietly and this mic is putting pressure on me. He said I'm talking quietly now. I'm growing up. <laughs> I'm getting mature. 
<laughs> if I have to start arranging and buying me another mic, I can't be, you see me stressing him. Shout hallelujah. It's not fitting the way I want to talk. The way I feel like, I feel like talking. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So how does Satan can destroy a community because of sin? That sin is the legal ground for Satan in one's life. Shout hallelujah. But the point we're even trying to make is that what the church is the reason why a city is what? Preserved. So that's what we are, that's what we are considering. We are trying to check, to dissect that truth. Praise Jesus forevermore. Because there, don't forget, I said the, the, that all nations under heaven are governed by two laws, right? The law of righteousness and the law of sin. Praise Jesus. And that in your testament, God executed judgment upon the nations that walk in sin. But that is not so in the New Testament after the establishment of the new covenant. Are you following me? That upon the establishment of the new covenant, are you with me? God has stopped judging men for their sins. That the judgment of men will be in the future. Are you following me? But that God is no longer judging you for your sin is not a license to sin. Are you following me? Because apart from storing up for yourself judgment in the future, you are also exposing your life to the destruction of Satan. And we saw as a case study in the morning, we saw the man in the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, how the man was sinning. And the church, the, the spiritual father of the church, Paul, how to tell the church to release him to Satan. You understand? So, a man can be released to Satan because of sin, because of wickedness. Satan can have a full old. You understand? You are, you, are, you, are even, you are still in God's hands. You see how there's still some form of struggle in your life. Your life is not in balance. Now think of, of, of when Satan himself, when God is no longer in your case, no longer involved in your case. Are you following me? Because at that point where that man was released to Satan, God was no longer involved in his case. Are you following me? God was no longer what? Involved in the case. Why? Because the church was no longer involved. Because the church had sent him away. Are you following me? Now, even, you know, even when God is involved in your case, you know that some go to your own Google. Now imagine when God is no longer involved and all, you, all the Bible involvement of your life is Satan. Satan is the one in charge of your life. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So, and it was because of sin. So we saw that man in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that Satan, he was legally, are you following me, handed over to Satan for destruction, for destruction of his flesh, of the things in the natural, his natural life, because of sin. Are you following me? So Satan can have access to your flesh, your natural life, because of sin, on the premise of sin. And it is legal. Are you following me? Because, the, because but sin is a reproach to any people. Kennedy, it's good to see you. I didn't even know you were coming. I just called you to ask after my friend. Because I've missed him. And today, we we'll collect his new number. And we'll visit him this week in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus, forevermore. And we also saw, so we saw from that story, they will move to chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, where Paul now began to talk to the church themselves, that they themselves now should be aware of falling into the sin of unforgiveness, the sin of hatred, the sin of afflicting another brother, and the sin of disobedience. Because if they are not careful to forgive the brother, they will expose themselves. They'll be walking in these sins. And that by walking in these sins, they, are, they will be giving Satan an advantage. So that's what it says in chapter 2, verse 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Let Satan should get an advantage of us who are not ignorant of his devices. I've explained in the morning what led to this statement. Are you following me? So Satan will get an advantage over this church. Are you following me? If they don't forgive that brother. Are you following me? Because not forgiving that brother will now open them up to four cat at least four categories of sin. Like I've highlighted there. Are you following me? So and that will give Satan an advantage. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So Satan has devices. And one of, the, one of his devices is, is what entering people's life through sin. Are you with me? 
Praise Jesus forevermore. So, <coughs> so <coughs> the reason for this study actually, for this preservation, is so that we can stop the work of Satan in our cities, in our environment. Because God is no longer punishing people for sin. That's the truth. Are you following me? Okay. Let me please show you that. Then we'll proceed. Because I've only mentioned it. I think I'll show, I'll show it from Luke. But let me just show you something. So, upon the death and resurrection of Jesus, upon the death and resurrection of Jesus, the reproach that comes upon a people because of their sins is not so much the judgment of God as it is the devouring of Satan, the destruction of Satan. So, since Jesus Christ died and resurrected, are you following me? Shout hallelujah. This sound is not like the sound in the morning. Like echo, I mean, what am I hearing? What's happening? Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. If you touch it, you will not scatter it. But it's echoing. Like it's bouncing back to my ear. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. It's getting better. Are we ready now? Glory to Jesus. We can just remove the echo, it will be fine. We can just remove the, maybe the reverberation, that bouncing effect. It's hand on the air. Glory to Jesus. Are we ready now? Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Don't worry, just do the best you can do. You cannot shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Are we ready? Glory to God forevermore. Praise Jesus. I think it's much better now. Yeah. I can't feel that. It's louder and it's clearer and it's better. I think it was. It's fine. Don't worry. God has helped you. Can we appreciate them for me? Well, the person who will buy, who will buy equipment that you busy in remote control. You control it. Not phone or remote. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, since the death and resurrection of Jesus, are you following me? God has stopped punishing people for their sins. He has stopped judging people for their sins. So if you see anybody suffering for his sins now, are you following me? It's not God. It's Satan. Are you following me? That has passed through that ground of legality to begin to afflict the person. So look at Romans chapter 5. So, all the point here, sin is not, is not free. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Sin is not free because the wages of sin is death. Are you following me? And the person that administered the death in this dispensation is Satan. Are you following me? Who administers, the, the, who, who administers death in this dispensation? Satan. He administers the reproach. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. And it is because of this that the church is in the community. You now can I help people. Are you following me? So look at Romans chapter 5. I, I don't want to bother the point before I proceed that God is no longer punishing anybody for their sin. COVID-19 is not God's judgment. It's not God judging the earth. When God first judged here, we know what happened now. Huh? Destroyed everybody. When he judged Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened? He destroyed. <laughs> Are you following me? When the Holy Ghost judged Ananias and Sapphira, what happened? They died. What did they do? They, they told a lie in you. You know how many lies you have told? Since you gave your life to Jesus. <laughs> so you say God is not judging you. Don't lie. Don't lie against God. Are you following me? So look at, to bother this point, let me look at Romans chapter 5 from verse 6. Romans 5 from verse 6. Praise Jesus. For when we are yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Are you following me? When we are what? Yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Are you with me? So when did Christ die for us? When we were without strength. And it says when we were helpless. Are you with me? When we were helpless, Christ died for us. Now, Christ died for who? The ungodly. Who did Christ die for? The ungodly. And it says died for us sinners. When we're yet without, when we're helpless, Christ died for us sinners. So who did Christ die for? 
sinners who sent Christ to die. God. Are you following me? So God saw all of us sinners. Are you following me? Because a new covenant would be enacted. Are you following me? God was no longer seeing judgment to bring judgment upon the sinners. What God was seeing for the sinners was redemption out of his love. Are you following me? Not judgment out of his anger. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So God was looking at the sinners and what he was looking to do to them was to redeem them. Was to do what? Was to redeem them. To redeem sinners. So he sent Jesus to die for sinners. So imagine that God, don't, you must never forget the scripture that he died for them who were sinners. <laughs> you understand? You see it in another part. When he did die for us, when we were sinners. Shout hallelujah. This mixer is a sinner. <laughs> Someone has to die for it. You have to die with your salary. You have to send your salary. Let's go and buy on that mixer. I don't die, die. <laughs> Somebody has to die. <laughs> If there's no death, there can't be redemption. <laughs> if there can't be redeemed, unless there's death, your salary has to die. <laughs> your salary has to die. Your income has to die. <laughs> Praise Jesus forever. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So don't forget, you must never forget this truth. Because if you don't, if you don't hold this truth, you will think that, Satan, that God is angry with you and God is punishing for sin. Presently. You understand? And it could be the hand of Satan. It, it is the hand of Satan. Are you following me? It's always the hand of Satan now. But if you don't know this truth that Jesus died for you when you were a sinner. So, God that so much loved us and sent Jesus to die for us when we, when we were sinners. When he saw our... Now, at that time, when we were sinners, God did not just see our hearts. He also saw our hearts. You follow me? It's not that our heart was dark, black, evil. Totally evil, completely evil. And our hearts were also dark and evil. He saw everything about us. Are you following me? He saw that who we are was evil. And what we do is evil. Are you following me? But his plan at that time, because it is now time for a new dispensation to come in. The dispensation of the new covenant. Are you following me? And if, it is, if it's the new covenant, if it's the dispensation of the new covenant, are you following me? Then he has to remember their sins no more. He has to forgive their iniquities and their unrighteousness and remember their sins no more. Are you following me? If it's going to be the new covenant, then there has to be a propitiation for sin. There has to be forgiveness and redemption. If it's going to be the new covenant, then we cannot be talking of, ju- of, of, of judging people for their sins. We have to talk of redeeming people out of their sins. Are you following me? So God, if he wanted to destroy us, are you following me? It's not now that Jesus Christ has died. Are you with me? Are you following me? If we wanted to destroy, it would have destroyed before, it would have destroyed the whole world, all of us, nobody would be existing again before Jesus came. So he saw all the evil we are and that we could do and that we did. He sent Jesus to die. You understand what I'm trying to say? He didn't respond with anger. He didn't respond with judgment. Are you following me? He didn't respond with judgment. He didn't respond with anger. Are you following my friend? So is it now that Jesus Christ has now died and resurrected that God now starts responding with anger to people's sin? Are you following me? It doesn't make any sense. You knew them before you died for them. <laughs> Are you following me? And you died for them so that you could save them. Are you with me? Are you following my friends? So he died for us while we were sinners. Not just that while we were sinning. While we were sinners, our person was the person. It was sin. Sin was all over us. That was when he died for us. He didn't kill us that time. Are you following me? He didn't let your business crumble at that time. Because of, because of who you are as a sinner, or who you were as a sinner, and what you did, sinning. He didn't let your business suffer. He didn't let your business crumble. Are you following me? Because of the death of Jesus. Are you following me? So is it now, now that you are not a child of God, that Jesus Christ has died, 
not even just a child of God, that Christ has died for sinners. That God, that God, that died for them while they were sinners. That now, that they have now died. Is it not now that you now start punishing them for their sins? It's not true. Are you following me? The best time to punish them for their sins, if I was going to punish them at all, you understand? Don't, don't worry, the future is still there. Are you following me? Worse before he died. He shouldn't have died for them at all. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So Jesus died for us while we're, while we're sinners. That has to be clear to you. Are you following me? Look at the next verse. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. I love to read this, this in NLT. It's very clear and very simple in NLT. Let me read it again. From verse 6. Don't worry, you don't have NLT, they just stay. When we well, just follow me according to the verses. I'm reading from verse 6 now. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Are you following me? Now, most people would not be willing to die, this verse 7, for an upright person, though someone might pass willing to die for, for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Are you following me? Are you with me? God did what? Show his great love for us by doing what? By sending Christ to die for us while we were still what? sinners. Give me in KJV. By sending Christ to die for us when we were still what? sinners. But God commended his love towards us, KJV. But God not commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Are you following me? So, when we were sinners, when it was time for Jesus to die, when it was time for the new covenant to be established, what God showed towards us was not judgment. Are you following me? The reason why God showed judgment to the first earth, to the first earth, are you following me? To the first creation, are you following me? To the first earth. Why God showed judgment was because it was not yet time for what? For redemption. It was only time for the new covenant. It was only time for Christ to die. So the only thing that they could get at that time, the best they could get from God, was judgment. You see, you see, God judged them, of course, because, but sin is a reproach to anything, because that, that is the law of sin. Are you following me? So, God judged them, not because they were very sinful. Are you following me? This generation is more sinful. Are you with me? Oh, you think that generation was more sinful than this generation? It's not true. Because even Jesus Christ was speaking before this, like some 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was speaking to a certain city. I can't remember the name of the city. He said that what? Even Sodom and Gomorrah also, that they would, I, I can't remember how he put it. Can you find that scripture for me? That if, if, if he preached, if what was preached, he said, what do you call um, Koratin and whatever, the name of that city? He said, if what was preached in you was preached to Sodom, he said they would what? They would have repented. <laughs> Are you following me? Korasin. You understand? Korasin. Look for, look for that, look for that scripture. Woe unto thee, Korasin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. Now, look at the way Korasin sounds and Bethsaida. Sounds very beautiful. <laughs> Are you following me? Like the house of God. He said, woe unto you, Korasin. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. No, way, this was like so more than 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so start imagining war unto you, Nigeria. War unto you, America. <laughs> war unto the Korasi. War unto the Bethsaida. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they are the great while ago, repented, sitting in circles and ashes, you understand? Now, I'm trying to make you see how that sin grows. And that sin gets more sinful in each generation. Are you following me? This generation is more sinful than that, than the first generation. I'm trying to show you something. Because this guy was talking to Korazin and Bezada after like 4,000 years. Are you following me? About 4,000 years after the first creation was destroyed. You understand? And some thousands of years after Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. He said, if what was done in you 
He was done his other man coming. I don't have what? Repented. What is the implication? This Corazin and Bethsaida were more terrible than what? Sodom and Gomorrah. Is that not true? Do you get? That's the, that's the implication, right? Do you understand? That's the implication. They were more terrible. They were more terrible. Now imagine <laughs> how terrible our own generation is compared to that generation. Are you following me? Now I'm telling you, I'm telling you because I want to make a statement. God destroyed them, that generation, those generations, the first creation, and also Sodom and Gomorrah. Not because they were, they were the most sinful generation. Are you following me? Are you with me? It destroyed them because the law of sin is that a nation will experience reproach. Are you following me? And there was nothing to, to cushion them from the repercussion of their sin. There was, no, there, was no, there was no provision at that time for their sin. The provision had not been effected. Are you following me? Are you with me? So they had to be destroyed. Because this generation is more sinful. But God is not judging this generation. He's not destroying this generation for sin. Why? Because a provision has been set aside to cushion this generation, to cushion man from the judgment. Are, are you following me? From God's judgment. At least in the present. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, what any generation experiences now when it comes to repercussion of sin is what? Is the affliction of Satan. Is the destruction of Satan. So go to where we are reading originally. Romans chapter 5. So I'm in verse 8. But God showed his love is written up towards us by sending Christ to die for that we are still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight, verse 9, by the blood of Christ, it will certainly save us from God's, gener- from God's condemnation. <clears throat> it will do what? It will certainly save us from God's word condemnation. Now, so he's saying now, much more than being understood by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall what? Be saved from what? Who wants that wrath? God. Now he says, we shall be saved. So when is that wrath? In the future. <laughs> Are you following? So it might be happy now that, ah, thank God, though, eh? God does not judge us for sin again. <laughs> it's the new covenant now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Truly, does not judge us for sin again. But his wrath is in the future. Are you following? His wrath is when? In the future. So you might escape from God's judgment upon sin now. Are you following me? But if you don't escape, but if you don't repent, you will not be able to escape from his wrath in the future. And even if you escape from God's judgment, we are not sure you escape from Satan's de- destruction. Are you following me? So verse 10 says that, where is it? For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved from through the life of his son. Are you following me? For even we are enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled to be saved by his life. So, for since we were, our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies. So, what is this Bible saying? Man became God's enemy because of sin. Don't forget that. Are you following me? Man became what? God's enemy because of sin. But because of the death of Jesus, what happened? The friendship between God and man was what? Restored. Are you following me? So, God, man is no longer God's enemy. Man only has one enemy now, Satan. Or two enemies, Satan and himself. Are you following me? Satan is man's enemy and man is man's enemy. But God is, God is no longer man's enemy. Are you following me? God is man's friend. See, the truth is, see, God is on man's side. I'm not saying God, I'm not saying God, God is on the Christian side, though. God is on what? Man's side. Are you following me? So the friendship between God and man has been restored by the death of Jesus. That's why God is not punishing people for sins again presently. Because what now is it between God and man is what? Is friendship. Are you following me? Because Jesus Christ has dealt with the same issue. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. We will certainly be saved through the life of his son. 
We shall be saved by his life. Saved from what? A future judgment. Are you following? But people will be saved from a future judgment, those who have received the work of Christ. Are you following me? Are you with me? If you are practicing sin and living in sin, you don't embrace, embrace the work of Jesus, you cannot be, it's God in the, in the future. So, presently now, people suffer for their sin because of the work of Satan, because of Satan's destruction. In the future, people suffer for their sin because of God's judgment. You see the difference now? Hmm? In the Old Testament, before the New Covenant, people suffer for their sin because of God's judgment and Satan's destruction. Now, after establishing the New Covenant, people only suffer for their sin because of what? Satan's destruction. But in the future, people will suffer eternally for their sin. Why? Because of what? God's judgment. Why will it no longer be because of Satan's destruction in the future? Anybody, can, can anybody answer that? That question. In the future, People will suffer for their sin. In the future, people will suffer for their sin eternally because of God's judgment. Why do you think it will, no, it will no longer be because of Satan's destruction in the future? Why do you think it will only be because of God's judgment? Facing his own judgment. Satan will also be facing his own judgment. Do, do, I, do you have a contrary opinion or you have all you want to add? That's very, very brilliant. So it, it, will, no longer be because, it will no longer be Satan destroying people or facing people. Why? Because he will also be facing what? His own judgment. He will also be judged by the lake of fire, with the judgment of fire. Are you following me? So everybody that, that has a, a relationship with sin will face God's judgment in the future, in, including Satan that is what? That is destroying people for their sin now. <laughs> Can you see an irony? Someone that will still be, that will still be judged is destroying people now. <laughs> Are you following me? So in the future, Satan can no longer what? Destroy people for their sin. Because him to also be what? Facing God's judgment for his sin. Are you following me? So guys, judgment is coming upon sin and sinners. God's judgment in the future. But what is the point here? We're talking about the present. God is not judging anybody for sin. He's not judging you. Are you following me? I think we also looked at Luke. We looked at Luke chapter... We looked at Luke chapter 2 last week. Let me just quickly read it. So I'll just move on. Luke chapter 2. We just read from verse 8. Verse 8. And they were in the same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good time. Now please. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to what? All people. So this good tidings of great joy I bring is, to, is for all people. To all people. Continue. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, which shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, praising God and saying, Why are they praising God? Because it was God and Himself that initiated this new relationship between Himself and man. Are you following me? So the angels were praising God on behalf of man because what? The relationship between God and man, the friendship was what? Initiated by God. By sending His Son to die for us. So look at what it said. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward what? Men. It is a good toward towards the believer. Good towards what? Men. And on earth, peace. So, if, so when it comes to God and his relationship with the earth, are you following me? What God thinks about the earth now? If you like, sin or the sin, sin or the sin, it's peace. God is not angry with you. He's not fighting with you. But Satan will destroy you. And if you escape, you cannot even escape now. <laughs> And about from now on, in the future, God himself will will destroy you. But don't let us go to the future. I want to talk about now. Because it is now that we can preserve the people. In the future, we don't need to preserve anybody again. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So presently, it is peace. Are you following me? It is peace between God and men. It is good will. What God asks for men is good will towards men. You understand? So do you understand now why sin is so much, and God is not judging anybody. Do you understand? Because of what? The work of Jesus. 
So God is no longer angry with anybody. Are you following me? Are you with me? But don't forget Jesus Christ, so that we can be redeemed from sin, from the power of sin and from the penalty of sin. Now, if you don't embrace the work of Jesus, you'll not suffer in the present from the hand of God. But in the future, because of your failure to embrace the work of Jesus, you will suffer the wrath of God. You understand? Are we good now? So let's continue on the present. So, Satan always destroys and afflicts a people for sin. But God has one character. He's a merciful God. Can you say he's a merciful God? Can you say God is a merciful God? So, I'll be talking about God's mercy. Now, even in the midst of Please don't forget this, that in the present, since the work of Jesus, it is Satan that is oppressing, destroying, and devouring nations for their sins, on the premise of sin. Huh? He can destroy for other reasons. You understand? He doesn't need, he doesn't need it to sin before he destroys you. He's a wicked Satan. But on the premise of sin, only Satan is what? Destroying nations. Are you with me? Praise Jesus. But God is so merciful. God has a, a default state of heart towards man. You understand? And what's that default state? Mercy. Can you say mercy? Mercy. Mercy. God is so merciful to man. He loves mankind so much. And the way he can express that love is mercy. is to show man mercy. Are you with me? So, even though a people are expressing reproach because of their sin, God in his mercy still always seeks to preserve man. Are you following me? God always seeks what? To preserve man. Are you following me? So, even though a generation is so sinful, a community is so sinful, a nation is so sinful, are you following me? And because of that, Satan is afflicting them, is devouring and destroying them, God in his mercy always still finds, wants to find a way to preserve them from the power of Satan, from the affliction of Satan. Are you following me? Because if God leads them to the hand of Satan, Satan, he will destroy everything. Are you following me? So, I'll be looking at two instances from the scripture that show us how God seeks to preserve a people despite their sin. He seeks to, to preserve them from the reproach that their sin brings upon them. Now, one of one is Noah's Ark, the Ark of Noah. Can I say Noah's Ark? Can I say Noah's Ark? So God Himself was going to destroy the earth because of sin. Are you following me? But there's something about God is merciful. He was still looking for how to what? To preserve man. He wants to destroy man, but he wants to preserve man also. Are you following me? Look at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. From verse... Okay, let's read from verse 1. Genesis is from verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth... And daughters were born unto them. And daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet is they shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented God that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the earth, for it repented me that I have made them. So God said, I'm going to destroy everything because of sin, because of wickedness. Are you following me? But even though he's going to destroy everything, he still wants to save the game. He wants to still save man. That is his heart. Look at verse 8. But Noah 
found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Can I say Noah found grace? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace. God had mercy on him. Do you understand? Noah found grace. Oh, may you know what's may you understand the scripture? That means the outcome of what God wanted to do upon the face of the earth. Are you following me? Noah will not be exempted from it because he's a good man. Are you following me? That was it. But Noah found grace. So God decided to show him mercy. He found only a jury. You understand? He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God looked at him and God had mercy on him. Are you following me? Not because of Noah's own goodness, but because of God's own mercy. Are you following me? But don't worry, I don't want to really talk about this Noah finding grace. But the point is that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God had mercy on him. Now you need to understand this. If you look at this scripture, you would think that God just, that God saw Noah and God wanted to save Noah. No. Are you with me? Now God looked at Noah and God said, okay, I want to destroy the whole world, the whole earth. Ah, but Noah, I love Noah. He has found grace, so I will save Noah. Are you following me? God had mercy on Noah, on that one man, because he thought that through that one man, he could preserve a lot of people from that destruction, from that judgment. Are you following me? I'll show you. Don't worry. Shout hallelujah. So, God had mercy. God was looking at that generation I wanted to destroy, and he was thinking that how many of them can I preserve? Are you following me? He was thinking of preserve. I'm in the cell. He was thinking of how many can I preserve? I'll show you. Are you following me? All of, all of them were sinful, corrupt, apart from Noah. Are you with me? But God was he thinking, how many can I preserve? He was he looking at? Can I preserve as many as possible? Are you following me? So if I want to do this work of preservation, can I see someone through whom I can achieve it? Praise Jesus. So his son Noah, glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So his son Noah, Noah found favor, found grace in the sight, in the eyes of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So, God was thinking, are you following me? Was hoping that through Noah, he would be able to preserve a lot of people from that gen- in that generation, from destruction, out of his mercy. Are you following me? Look at verse, verse 13. Oh, read, read verse 9. Read verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Are you following me? And Noah walked with God. So in this generation, Noah was the only what? Talk to me, was the only what? Just man. Even his family was not just. Are you following me? He was the only just man. So if it's only Noah that God wanted to preserve, are you following me? The other seven people will not join in. I'm going somewhere else. And I'll show you in the scripture. God finding, God looking at Noah and making him, making, him, and making him an object of his grace, an object of his mercy, was because of God's mercy, are you following me? And his willingness, his heart, to see if he could preserve as many people as possible from destruction in that generation. Are you following me? Because the Bible says Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. In that entire generation, only one man, Noah, had a walk with God. Are you following me? The other seven people did not have a walk with God. It was Noah. Are you following me? But don't worry, these seven people were what? Were his family members. They were members of his household. 
Are you following me? I'm going somewhere. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Keep reading. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Am, and Japheth. Uh huh. Don't sit down. Why is is it distracting you? Hey, sit down now. Oh, stretch yourself. Leave it. Leave. You can leave the door. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the head is filled with violence to them, and behold, I will destroy them with the head. Are you following me? So God said he will destroy them with the head. Now, see how God is talking so much as if he's so angry, as if he actually, as if his heart is ready to destroy everything. This God, if you know this God, you will fear him, and you will just love him. That Noah, that statement, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Is a secret. God wanted to save as many people as possible. You will see it. Don't worry. Because He always seeks to preserve people despite their sins. He's a merciful God. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. So move to verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark and pitch it within and without with pitch. Verse 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the bread of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and I shall come into the earth, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. You will, you will think from this statement that God only had plans to save Noah. And these seven people. No. These were the seven people that were ready to be saved. So Noah's ark. Are you following me? God wished to save as many people as possible. And that was the reason why he extended his grace to Noah. Are you following me? So the ark was intended by God to preserve as many people as possible. But only these eight people were preserved through the ark. You will understand. Look at chapter chapter 7, verse 1. Chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into all the heart. Now, if it were 100,000 people that decided to follow Noah, God would say, Come thou and all the 100,000 people into the heart. You will soon see it shortly. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Verse Verse 17. And the flood was up, and the flood was sorted upon the head, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lit up above the head. Verse 21. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth, and every man. 22. All in whose nostrils was the bread of life, or what that was in the, in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fall of the, of, of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the head. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Are you following me? Noah only did what? Remained alive and what? They that were with him in the ark. Are you following me? Hmm. So, the people that will be preserved, are you following me, are not a particular people. Are you following me? The people that will be preserved are people that, will, that find their way into what? The heart. Are you following me? Are you following me? Because the heart is an extension of God's mercy to the earth, to people in the midst of their suffering, in the midst of their of, of, of their place of judgment. Because of their sin. So the ark is an extension of, of, of God's mercy to a sinful and corrupt people to preserve them in spite and despite their sin. Are you following me? So as long as you can come into the ark 
find your way into the ark, you'll be preserved. Are you following me? You'll be what? You'll be preserved. The ark is what? An extension of what? God's mercy. To preserve people in the midst of judgment, in the midst of destruction. Are you following me? To still preserve them. Okay, you people are not getting it yet. Look at, where is it? Now, quickly go to 2 Peter chapter 2, from verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2, from verse 1. Glory to Jesus. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse, from verse 1. So, look at this. God's intention was not to save only Noah and these seven people. Are you with me? Are you with me? God, these young people too were sinful. Only Noah walked with God. Are you following me? Only Noah was just. So if God's angel was only to save Noah, the just man, he should destroy every other person. Hmm? The ark is a provision for the preservation. Are you following me? An extension of, an extension of God's mercy and grace to, to Noah or through Noah. Praise Jesus forevermore. But there are false prophets also among, among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction? And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. And true covetousness shall they feign. We, shall, they, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not? For he God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast, down to, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. I'm going somewhere. But save Noah, the eighth person. You understand? There were eight people that God, that God saved. Hmm? A preacher of what? Talk to me, a preacher of what? That means Noah was preaching. <laughs> Are you following me? Noah was what? He was what? Preaching to the people. When did Noah start preaching? When did Noah start preaching? The moment God told Noah that I'm sending rain upon the earth to destroy the earth with the flood. Are you following me? So build an ark. Are you following me? The ark is not to save you and your household. The ark is to save as many people that we heed to your preaching. That we heed to the warning of the coming judgment. Are you following me? Are you following me? From the day that God planned, that God told Noah that he was going to destroy the earth. And that he should build an ark for preservation. To preserve as many people as possible. Noah understood God's art. Are you following me? So Noah, when he understood God's intention, that this ark is to preserve what? As many people as what? Possible. From this judgment that is coming upon the heads because of their sin. But God, in His mercy, He always loves to preserve people in the midst of judgment, in the midst of destruction, even for their own sins. So Noah began to preach to the people repent, come into the ark, embrace the mercy of God. It's going to rain. And don't forget, it had never rained on the heads before this time. So they were making fun of Noah. Where is rain going to come from? You remember that song? <laughs> Praise Jesus. So Noah was preaching to the people. He was preaching. He was preaching. Oh my Jesus. Go to Romans chapter chapter 10 verse 
Go to Romans chapter 10. We'll start from verse 8. Let me see. Okay. Verse 9. Now, how shall they hear unless the preacher is sent to them? Maybe verse 6. It's in this chapter, verse. Okay. Uh, so, start from verse 13 again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you following it? Verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And now shall they believe in him whom they have not heard. And now shall they hear without what? A preacher. Are you following me? So, when God wants to... Friends, are you following me? <laughs> so, God's intention is to save the people from their sin. Are you following me? But they need to hear that God wants to save them. They need to hear that there is judgment for their sin and that God wants to save them. Are you following me? But they cannot hear unless what? A preacher is sent to them. Now talk to me. A preacher does not arise and go by himself. A preacher is what? Sent. Are you with me? A preacher is what? A preacher is always sent. Are you following me? To talk to a people and turn them from their sins. And the punishment and the punishment for their sin. So if you see a preacher, he's one that is sent. Are you following me? That no, uh, ne, uh, Jonah was a preacher sent to Nineveh. Are you following me? God planned to destroy that city, but his plan was not really to destroy it. His plan was to save them. So he sent a preacher to them, Noah, uh, ne, uh, Jonah, so that way he could save them. And eventually he saved them because they heard the preacher. Are you following me? So, Noah did not start preaching righteousness by himself. Noah began to preach righteousness because he was sent by God to preach. Are you following me? Go back to Noah. Go back to where we are we're reading. Second Peter. He was sent by God to what? To preach. The head person is a preacher of righteousness. Are you following me? So, the idea of a preacher means that what? He has been sent by God. To convey a message to a people. You follow me? So, once God told Noah to build the ark that was going to destroy the earth, God also told Noah to go ahead to preach to as many people that would listen. Are you following me? So that they can be saved and preserved from the destruction coming upon the earth. Let me read this scripture to you in NLT, verse 5. Let me read this to you in NLT. Look at maybe HCD will also give us a good translation. And God did not spare the ancient world, except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Look at what NLT says. It's still the same thing. And God did not spend, spare the ancient world, except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. That's the name of this preacher of righteousness. Are you following me? Noah did what? Want the world of God's word righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. Noah did what? Want the world of God's word righteous judgment. That's the meaning of this preacher of righteousness. He preached to them that God will judge this world. And he preached because God sent him to preach. And what is the purpose of preaching? The purpose of preaching is to what? Is to save. So you can begin to see God. You can begin to see God's heart for people, for man, even in the midst of judgment. Are you following me? Even in the midst of of a, are you following me? Even in the midst of, of of people suffering destruction and judgment for their sins, you can still see God's heart. He still wants to see. Are you following me? So it was not just about Noah. It was God's intention to save as many people as possible through that ark. So he sent Noah to preach. So it was those, see, see, if the seven people to that, that are members of the family, his wife, his wife, his son, his, his, his three sons, and their wives, if they also did not listen to Noah, they were also what? They were perish. Only Noah would be alive. Are you following me? Are you with me? So Noah was the only one that could, that could be sent as a preacher 
to that generation. So he also preached to his family member. His, if, his family members were not protect, were not protect, simply protected because they are Noah's family. Are you following me? Even though that could also happen, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about that. Are you following me? But they listened to Noah's warning. Because over here, they were also married. So they were be living in their own houses. They were not living. Are you following me? They were married with their own family. So he told them that God will soon destroy the earth. Join, but he planned to protect as many people as possible through this ark. So I'm inviting you to come into the ark so that it can be preserved. He preached to everybody. Are you following me? So what, what do I want you to see here? I want you to see God's art in still preserving a people. Are you following me? In the midst of judgment and destruction that they, that they go through, that they suffer because of sin. Are you with me? Huh. You, will, you, will, you will soon appreciate what I'm saying. When I come back, I want to show you God's art first. I want to show you how it preserves people from their sin. I mean, people from judgment and destruction. Now, it's through the church. Are you following me? But you have to understand that God has that act of mercy towards people to preserve. To understand this, this scripture more, go to First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. To understand this scripture better. For Christ also at once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, what are the spirits in prison? Let me clear explain something to you. Man is spirit and soul and body. Are you following me? I'll just give you a little insight into this. Then I'll come to you. So you understand this scripture. Man is spirit and soul and body. Are you following me? When man dies, are you following me? His body is in the ground. Are you following me? His body is where? In the ground, in the earth. His soul goes to the grave. Are you following me? And the spirit is held in death. In the prison of death. In death. Are you following me? Don't go there. So if you look at Revelation, the Bible says that death and the grave gave up what? They are dead. Are you following me? Because at the coming of Jesus, every component part of man must now reunite again. Are you following me? Okay, let, let me explain it in a better, for more clarity. For the man that is not born again, are you following me? When he dies, his body goes to the ground, his soul goes to the grave, his spirit goes to death. Death is a spiritual location that all the spirit of men that are not born again, men that die without Jesus. For the man that is born again, when he dies, his body goes to the ground, the same ground, his soul also to the grave. There's silence in the grave. Then his spirit goes to heaven. Do you understand? His spirit goes to what? To heaven. The spirit of just men made perfect in heaven. Are you following me? So at the coming of Jesus, what happens to, to the what happens to the Christian man that died that has slept in the Lord? His body, it happens at the same time. Are you following me? His spirit that is with God in heaven, are you following me? Are you following me? Comes from heaven. Are you following me? His soul rises from the grave. Are you following me? And reunites. All three of them now unite with the two now unites with what? With his body that is in the ground, the man now comes back to life. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Are you following my friends? So the spirit that is with God, are you following me? Reunites with what? With his soul in the grave and the body in the ground. So there is now resurrection, but in that resurrection is a new order. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not going to the red. That body he, he slept with will be changed to a new body. Are you following me? I'm not, I, I don't want to go into that resurrection details because that's not what I'm teaching right now. I, 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 I just want you to understand the scripture. Are you with me, my friends? I want you to understand the meaning of these spirits. These are not fallen angels. Are you with me? These are not what? Fallen angels. Because the purpose of preaching is to save. Jesus Christ did not come to save angels. The Bible says he did not come to help angels. He came to help what? 
the descendants of Abraham. Are you following me? These are not what? Fallen angels. Hmm? So the spirit of the, the unbeliever, when Jesus comes, eventually at the second resurrection, which is to death. Are you following? The first, the first resurrection, resurrection is for people that will reign with Jesus. The second one is for people that will be judged eternally in the lake of fire. All the others are in the Bible in Revelation. Are you following? So what happens is that their spirit will be released from death. They are soul from the grave. Their body from the ground. The three will unite again. Are you following me? And they will come back to life and face judgment. Are you with me? So these spirits, these people are died. Are you following me? I'm going away. These spirits are the spirit of those that died in the flood. You'll still see shortly. Are you following me? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. These spirits are what? Are the spirit of those that what? That died where? In the flood. Go to Revelation. The Bible says, the sea also gave up his, gave up his death. Oh my Jesus. Are you ready? Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. Are we ready? And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, old oil. This sea is not talking about people that died on water. <laughs> you understand? That when people die, maybe they are traveling on ship, they now die, they, that's not what it's saying. Are you following me? Don't forget, the time of Noah, that judgment was a generation. Talk to me. Those people that died, where are they? Those people that died in that flood. Who buried them? Don't forget, the old world died in that flood. Oh, friends, are you following me? The way you are looking at me. <laughs> this is as simple now. The Bible. The old world died in that flood. Have you, have you thought of it? When Noah and his family came down from the boat, they didn't, if they gave them the work of burying those people, ah, I don't know how they will bury them. Guys, are you, are, you, are you following me now? Are you following me? Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So Noah and Zami did not bury, they did not stand up, they did not come back and start burial. They came down and started offering to the Lord, sacrificing to the Lord. You understand? Because when they came back, they did not meet any dead person on the ground. Because God, in, because God killed them with flood, with water, and he buried them in the sea. He buried them in that water. God did a mass barrier. So that entire generation, that first creation, that first earth, are you following me? Till today, they are, they, 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 they are they, till today, are you following me? They are, they are, they are body. God, they are kept somewhere in the sea. Are you following me? Friends, are you with me? <laughs> are you following me? Those people that died in that first judgment, are you following me? God, they are buried. God buried them. If, if God didn't bury them, you think they, 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 they will be smelling at that time and they will, they will pose a danger to Noah and the other people. And it was too much that God would not say Noah, Noah and eight and some people should go and bury them. To bury one man say, you know what it costs? To dig the ground and bury one person. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So God buried, those guys died in the water in the flood of God's judgment and were buried in the sea. So today, you cannot, nobody can locate them because God has buried them. Are you following me? So they are different from when every other person dies. God himself destroyed them and buried them in the sea. They are in the sea. God knows the location where he buried them. Are you following me? So on the day of judgment, because they will still, be, they will still come to face eternal judgment. Because they have not received the preaching of Christ through Noah in their days. Are you following me? Oh, you guys, ah, Bible is simple now. If I, 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 I don't want to open too many scriptures to you. 
I want to talk to you about that how that the dead, the second, the second resurrection, how people will rise to face judgment. You understand? The first resurrection is for believers when Jesus Christ comes at the sound of the trump. It's for people who slept in Christ. They will, they, will, they will come to receive their reward from Jesus. But there's also a second resurrection. Are you following me? Where have you ever been that did not rise in the first resurrection? Will now rise is unto eternal judgment. So, but what about people that have died in that false judgment of the earth? You think, you think God has forgotten about them? They've not yet gone to hell. They've not yet gone to, to, to the fires of hell. Nobody is in that fire now. Are you following me? I don't mind all those stories. They, they saw people in the fire. Everybody is showing their future. But present, nobody is in what? In lake of fire. Lake of fire is the future what? Judgment. Are you with me? It's a future what? Judgment for everybody that died without Jesus. Are you following me? So these people, the people that died in that first generation of the head, the whole world that God himself killed and did a mass burial for. What did God used to kill them? Water. What did he used to bury them? Water. He buried them inside water. By himself. God, I'm serious. God knows where those people are. In the, in the part of the sea. So he said that day when they will rise up to judgment. Said, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. So this dead, he's talking of that false generation of human beings on the face of the earth that God killed the flock. They will rise again. Are you following me? And death and hell deliver, deliver of the dead which were in them. Oh my Jesus. And what? Death and what? And hell. Now, this sea is what hell is what owes the body of those that died in that false judgment. Are you following me? People who die now, they are buried in the ground. Are you following me? If you also if, if people are traveling, they also die on the sea in this dispensation or since after this judgment. They are not part of this sea people. Do you understand? They are also somewhere under the ground. Under the sea. He's talk, he used the word sea here yeah, to show us the first generation of human beings on the earth that were, that were killed in the waters of the flood and they were buried. He's talking about that generation entirely. Are you following me? And, the, and death and hell deliver of the devil in them. Hell here is not fire. It is grave. Are you following me? So death here is where the spirit of the unbeliever is before judgment. Once he died. Hell here is grave. It is where the soul of every man is. Don't worry. Another time, maybe I'll, I'll show you all these things. Praise Jesus forevermore. So go back to first to that Peter. Chapter what? What do I have that? Three. I think we're in verse 19, right? Probably have that three, verse 19. No, we've not gotten. Okay. By which also he went and preached unto the spirit in prison. Are you following me? He said, Christ did what? Went and preached unto what? The spirit in prison. Now, he did not go when he died, though. He went and preached to them through Noah. You understand now? So, the first thing you need to understand is that these spirits are not angels. They are not fallen angels. Because Jesus Christ did not come to help angels. The purpose of preaching is to save people. And angels and fallen angels, there's no plan to save fallen angels. Do you understand? So, these spirits are the spirits, are you following me, of the of the people that died in the flood. Are you following me? There are spirits that is now located in the prison of death. That is located in death presently. Look at the next verse. Which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. So the people is referring to are people what? In the, in the dispensation of what? Noah. You understand? They were disobedient. Now, if you say somebody only was disobedient, that means an instruction was given. Are you following me? You can't, you can't, you can't say someone is disobedient without having given an instruction. So that was these spirits, they are not, they are not, they are human beings. I'm saying, he's saying the spirit is in prison. He's saying now their spirit is in prison. 
is in debt since they died in that flood. And why is that? Because they were diso- disobedient to the preaching of Noah. Don't forget that, that there is a place said Noah, the preacher of righteousness. So Noah preached righteousness to those people because God wanted to save them as many as were willing. Are you following me? But they were disobedient. Look at it. When was the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah? So God was, God, whilst Noah was preaching, God was waiting for who is going to believe this preaching and just enter the ark. You see, when was the long suffering of God waited? Waiting for what? For those that we accept what Noah was saying. You know what I'm trying to show you? God's compassion, God's mercy in preserving a people even despite their sins and their facing judgment and, and what destruction. He, he has that heart. When was the Lord of God waiting in the days of Noah? While the ark was preparing. So all the time that Noah was preparing the ark, he was also preaching to people that true, that God was going to destroy this earth too, and this ark is his plan to save people. And it's only people that come into this ark that will be saved. Noah kept preaching. Noah kept preaching. So when he says Christ went to preach, he's talking about the fact that Christ preached through Noah to those people when they were still alive. You don't preach to a dead man. Are you following me? Are you with me? You don't preach to a what? So Christ, it, could, it, it can also mean that Christ, when he now died, he now went in the streets to now meet those that already died, that are already dead, and after they preaching to them. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even make any intellectual sense. You don't preach to dead people. Praise Jesus. You don't preach to dead people. Is that true? So you're talking about the fact that Christ preached through Noah. Are you following me? That Christ sent Noah. God sent Noah. And Noah preached to those people in those days. Do you understand? That all the while that the ark was being, was being prepared, Noah was also preaching to the people. Perhaps many of them would repent and what? And be preserved through the ark. Are you following me? While the ark was not preparing, we feel that is, eight souls were saved by the water. So the preaching could only save how many words? Eight people, including Noah himself. So it was it was seven people that listened to what Noah said. You understand? So it was those seven people. Noah himself believed God, what God preached to him. Then some people believed what Noah was preaching, that he had heard from God. And those were people that were saved. But the other people were disobedient. You understand? Are you following me? Don't forget I said, the spirits which sometimes were disobedient. So those, that spirit, those people we're talking about in, in verse 19, they are the ones that were disobedient in the days of Noah. So these are not fallen angels. Are you following me? And they are not dead people that they, Christ now went to preach to them after they died. No. He's saying that Christ preached to them at that time through Noah. But they kept on being disobedient. As a result, they were destroyed through the flood. And now their bodies are kept in the sea. And now their spirits are in prison. Prison of death. So that at the coming of Jesus... When it's coming to judge the head, are you following me? The sea will now release their body. The sea will release, gave up his dead. Revelation. The sea will now release their body. Are you following me? Death also gave up his dead. Death released their spirits. That, that prison of death will also release their spirits. Then grave, hell, release their soul. They will now come back as a proper human being to now face eternal damnation. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. So, what's the point I'm trying to make here? Is that what? People get destroyed for their sins. People suffer for their sins. Are you following me? Are you following me? But that in the midst of all of those, God still has a merciful heart and seeks to work to preserve a people. You understand? Another, another one, I won't open the scripture for this. I would come back to it another time. When I, want to make the, when I want to make the next point, I will see. Another one is what? Abraham's intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me see. Can I just show? Okay, it's just 
Let me use five minutes on it or ten minutes and I'll be done. Praise Jesus. It's just 735. By 747, 45, we'll be out of here. Praise Jesus. So Abraham is a legend for Sodom and Gomorrah. Guys, don't forget what, what I'm saying. God always seeks to preserve the people in his mercy. Are you following me? Even though they are seen as God's judgment and what? Destruction upon them. Look at Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 18. So through Noah's ark, we see God's act in what? To preserve the people. Despite what? Their sins and their threatening judgment and destruction. Are you following me? We also see that through Abraham's intercession. I'll read a few verses. I want to read from verses 16 to 33, but I won't read everything. But I'll still come back to the scripture later in this discussion. So we'll just read from verse 16. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And, Lord said, and the Lord said, please, look at it. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, what was God's plan? Why to what? Destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, you would think that God, just, God wanted to give. This God is merciful. He said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, the reason why God wanted to reveal to Abraham was because what? He knew that Abraham would intercede for them. <laughs> Are you following me? He knew that what? Abraham would intercede for them. He knew. He was sure. This God is always seeking opportunity to, to save people, to preserve people, despite their sin. He seeks to preserve them in the midst of their destruction, in the midst of, of, of judgment that, has, that they brought upon, them, upon themselves because of sin. He always seeks the opportunity to preserve. His, his heart is so merciful. I want, you need to understand what I'm saying so that by the time we now start talking about the church, and our place in preserving people, you will understand God's heart. Are you following me? Say, so, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? You think, you think that God was just interested in talking to Abraham about it? No, you are not just interested in talking about it. You wanted to talk about it for a reason, because his heart is full of mercy. And he knew that Abraham would intercede for them. Keep reading. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great imagination, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, nice him, for I know him that he will command his children and his household of time, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And Lord said, because... They, now, look at, the, look at that verse. I'm just doing it. I'm here. And Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is common to me, and if not, that we know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet, before the Lord. God knew that once he told Abraham about his plan to destroy those people, that Abraham would stand before him as an intercessor. Guys, you have to know your place in the city that, you, that God has sent you, the place that God has sent you. Don't worry. When I, when I get to the next point, not today, you understand why, you now understand all of these puzzles very well. Can you continue verse 23? And Abraham drew near and said, we thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked. Verse 24. Paraventure there be 50 righteous within the city. We thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that, dear, that are there. Look at God's response. That be far from thee. Where is it? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for what? So you see that God, God wanted to destroy them. You understand? When Abraham began to intercede, he told Abraham, because he wanted Abraham to intercede. And Abraham interceded and gave him a condition. And God said, okay, if that condition is met, I will not destroy them. An entire city, he said, an entire city. You will appreciate this scripture soon. When you begin to understand the place of the church in the, in the community. Are you following it? Shout hallelujah. God said he will not destroy the city if you can find 50. Even up to 10. Abraham reached 10, right? Ten people. God said, "If I can find, imagine an entire community, an entire city, big, like yes, a, a country." God said, "If I find ten people righteous, that I will not destroy the country." Is that is that a God that you really wanted that you really want to destroy? Answer me now. They all said they were very sinful, very sinful people. Are you following me? That God planned to destroy them. God answered Abraham. God knew what he wanted. He knew that Abraham would intercede. But what I wanted to, guys, do you know what I wanted to see? The art of God is merciful art. That even though people are deserving of judgment, 
You know, people are suffering for their own affliction. God always seeks to what? Preserve them. See, see, this God that said he will not destroy a whole city, a whole nation, if 10 people can be found, 10 people, is that truly a God that wants to destroy? Answer me. Maybe nation has like 1 million or over 5 million people. Are you following? Over 10 million people. Are you with me? You now say you want to destroy all of them because of their sin. You follow me? You now go and pray to you that what if you can find 10? Also, if I find 10, I will not destroy them. Was your intention really to destroy them? What was the real intention? To save them, to preserve them. So what have you seen this evening? What, what, what have we really learned this evening? And that's what I want us to learn. That's the plan for this evening's teaching. To see God's heart in preserving a people. Are you following me? Despite their sin. Despite the, from the judgment or in the midst of the judgment and destruction that their sin has brought upon them. So bring back down, bring that back to this generation. That despite the sinfulness of our communities, of our, of our cities, are you following me? And Satan is destroying or wants to destroy or is destroying communities, nations, because of their sin. Safe God still seeks what? To preserve people from the destruction of Satan. If God can seek to, de- to preserve people from his own judgment. Do you know judging the first, do you know the destruction of the first was God's own judgment? But he sought to preserve people. Do you understand? The, the, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah was also what? God's judgment. But he also sought to what? To preserve people. If God, if God, God can seek in his mercy to preserve people from his own judgment because of their sin, how much more will he seek to preserve people from Satan's destruction because of sin? That's what we are going exactly. Do you understand now? If God would seek to preserve people from his own judgment because of their sin, how much more will he seek to preserve people from Satan's word, destruction because of their sins. Guys, God wants to preserve your city from the power of Satan, from the destruction of Satan. God wants to preserve your community from, from the destruction of Satan. By next week, Sunday, by God's grace, in the morning, we begin to look at how God does this. He does it through the church. Only the church. God can only preserve a city, can only preserve a community, a nation, from the destruction of, of Satan. Only through the church. You understand? The first earth, they could not be preserved. Sodom and Gomorrah could not be preserved because there was no church. A church was not found. You will understand from next week Sunday by God's grace. You understand? So church, we must not have place in the city. We must not have place in the community. We are here to preserve the community from the destruction of Satan. And that is the plan of God. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I will continue this teaching next week Sunday by God's grace. Praise God. Can we just give God praise? Let's thank God for His word that has come to us this evening. Let's give Him all the praise. Let's thank God for showing us His heart. For showing us His heart concerning us, concerning the nations, concerning our city. Let's let's worship Him. Father, we thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing us your heart this evening. Thank you for reminding us that you are a merciful Father. You are the God of mercy. You are ever willing to show mercy to thousands of generations. Thank you, Father. Thank you for showing us our place in the city, our place in the nations of the heads. Thank you, God. Thank you for for showing us that we are instruments of preservation to preserve the nations, to preserve the countries, to preserve our cities. We give you all the praise, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. We've come to the end of today's Bible study. We can drop our offerings on our way out. We are living right now um let's not forget our bible study on thursday by 5 30 p.m let's invite others and sunday service 8 a.m please let's not come late and let's also invite people 
I pray the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Can we stand to our feet as we share the grace in unison? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall do it as we love forevermore.